Hello and welcome again. This is step two in the Joomla tutorial development of an MVC component. And in this step, we're going to be adding a view to the site. We're actually going to be adding a controller as well. Now, when you start following a control or a tutorial on the internet, if you're like me, you always run into some sorts of problems. So it's worth it at the outset learning a little bit about debugging your code within Joomla. <coughs> and <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> and if you put debug Joomla into Google, you'll probably find this page here. <coughs> how to debug your code. And it gives you some tips about how to go about debugging your code using echo statements, for example, in the PHP or you can do var dump of any other sort of PHP variable <coughs> or using this particular function here nq message um, and we'll try these out just at the end of this video okay back to the code now something else you might want to think about now is with this multi-step tutorial how are you going to manage versions of your code because sometimes if you're following along, you can really get in a muddle with your code. You can seriously muck things up. And it's always good to have a, a previous base to fall back on. So fortunately, this tutorial is well designed. And down the bottom, you can see <coughs> the various files and, and get versions of them. But um, what I've done here is I've created the zip file of the previous version and I'll keep a zip file of each of the versions as we go along so that if I muck up some things um, then I've always got some means of getting back to some sort of a base. So for this step I've already copied the file information from the web page and here are all the files, the, the controller that we have and some of the few stuff here. There's the new manifest file. I've changed it as required, put in a new version number um, and added details of the new files and folders that we're, in, we're going to include. The only thing I haven't done here is I haven't updated the uh, main file, hello world.php, just yet. And if you're like me and, and you use Firefox, um, whenever you try to copy and paste you get everything put into one big long line so if you find in that just use another browser there is a little bit of a quirk with with Firefox it's actually this issue here but if you use another browser I'm using Chrome here Chrome works fine you could do a copy and then a paste and it all works okay so that's all the files updated um, they're all in this directory so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, zip up that directory send to press zip folder I'm going to call it version 2 and then I'm going to go on to Joomla extensions manage install Whoops. and I'm going to upload a package file so I'm going to then go to that area and upload version 2 and hopefully it should yes it should install correctly yes so there's components hello world and we'll just check and this is the hello world and we'll try that oh and this is the sort of thing that can happen from time to time you think you've meticulously followed all the instructions and then you end up with something like this and um, this actually happened to me when I tried a dry run of this um, luckily there's some information down at the bottom which gives you a clue of where the problem is here it's saying that view can't be found 
So if we go back, um, the problem is actually that I put the view into the wrong folder. So I put the view into the views folder instead of putting it into the hello world folder. So hopefully that should fix the problem. We'll delete that and we'll create a new zip file. Call it number two and go back and try this one. Extensions manage install. We don't need to um, uninstall the previous one. We can just load this on top. Success there. Hello world. And let's try this. Yes, that's working. Right, so that is the um, that's the code up and working. But really, the question is, what is actually happening here? Because we've got a whole lot of files, and oops, that's the new view in the in the different place. So we'll just forget about that. So we've got lots of files here. Uh, really, what is going on? So I've drawn a picture here, which will hopefully give you an idea about that. And if we just put that full screen. Uh, as I mentioned in the last video, whenever you get a, an HTTP request in, uh, Joomla actually looks at things in the HTTP request. And if it sees an option equals com hello world, it will run this file hello world dot php and you could actually write all of your component in that file and put out the html and everything and it would all work fine however you would miss out on all the benefits of what joomla provides for you as um, well base code that you can reuse um, if you want to avail of that base code then you really have to structure things the way that Joomla wants you to structure them. Uh, put the right files in the right directories, as we've already seen, and really call them the right things. So you have to call the, the classes that you're creating um, really as Joomla expects them to be. So what is going on with this code? And if we go back to this hello world.php um, if so if we look at this it's first of all checking that jexec is defined which is really just a security feature to, to stop people directly running this file without going through Joomla then it's getting controller equals j controller legacy get instance and if we go back to the picture it's really calling a, a class method of this base controller, which is um, jcontroller legacy. Now we're going to find in later uh, steps the base controller being something other than that jcontroller legacy. But because of what we're doing here, the appropriate base class to use is jcontroller legacy. And what it does, it, it goes to our controller file and gets PHP to process it and actually instantiates an object, um, an instance of our Hello World controller. And if we go back to the code, the next bit is really finding from the, uh, the input, which is like the HTTP request, um, what is the parameter which has got uh, which task is set to and if it finds a task then it will execute that task and um, in the absence of a task being there what it will do is it will run the um, the default which is the display so the next thing it's doing is it's trying to call the method which is specified in the task parameter 
Now here we've got no task parameter, task equals something. So what gets run is actually the display method. Within our controller it's just empty. So the display method which gets run is the display method of the base controller, J controller legacy. And what it does, it instantiates the view. So it looks for our view code and then creates um, an instance of that view that we've got, which again is based or inherits um, a uh, base class of JView Legacy. Um, it does the same with the model. Now we haven't got that in implemented yet, but we'll see that in a later step. And then it calls display on that view, and that display then runs this template.default file that we've got. So in our view, we have got it's setting up a message. This dot message equals hello world. And in our default file, we're just picking that up, this dot message. And that works because we're still in the context of that instance. So that's basically the way it works. Um, it's, a, it's a bit hard to follow so really what I'm going to do is uh, take an example and I was looking through the code and if you look at um, some of the other components that actually Joomla has, Joomla has got a facility called search and if you look at search we'll look at the search.php this is the file when someone um, comes in with an HTTP, HTTP request for that search and you can see that the search facility is pretty much the same it gets a controller instance from based on jcontroller legacy it tries to then run the um, run the method which is defined in the task parameter and if we look at controller.php of that task, we find that there are two methods. We'll find that there's the display method and there's also a search method. Now all of this code that we've got here is interpreted so we can actually go and change it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to put a couple of echo statements in. This is the display method in search Oops. and we're going to do it here as well this is the search method and we're also going to use that way that was defined in the debug j factory mq message no and we'll put we And we'll copy that. And put it in there. OK. So now when we go back to our instance, um, I've actually gone and uh, added another module here. So I've added a search module and I've put it in position 2. So you can actually see this here. So when I try something like this, sample, it should come up with the results. Now to understand what's going on here, let's put 
the uh, developer tools on with an F12 and run that again so what we find here is that the f there's two HTTP messages here the first is a post message that has come that is sent and has actually got a 303 status returned a 303 status is a redirect and in that post message if we look at the parameters we can see that there's um, task equals search and what that has done then is that Joomla has run the search.php this file here and then within this file here it's found that task is equal to search and it's tried to run the search method within here now that has resulted in a redirect um, the Joomla wants to redirect to a different page so at the end this redirect has been activated and the second mes message has resulted in a get to this new URL so you can see in the post the redirect uh, URL is there and that's the same as the URL that we've now I've visited and in that get if we look then at the params there's no task equals so what it will have run is equal the um, the search sorry the yes the display task the display method and looking at the messages that have come out here we've got this is the display method in search we've got this is the search method enqueued and this is the display method enqueued so if we look back at our code here what we put in we put in this message search me method and the search method enqueued and we find that only one of those has appeared only this one has appeared the other one has, dis has disappeared and the reason for that is that that first echo is really associated with this post so it is um, kind of like the response to the post message but that hasn't been displayed to the browser because it's because it has got a redirect to this location so that echo message has basically disappeared and the echo message that we then get is the one from the get the second HTTP request and that's that there now Joomla the advantage of using that other NQ message is that we've got both of those and really Joomla has stored those between the response to the post and the get uh, probably in a, a session cookie so that when you next come on with the get it reads the cookie and finds oh there's a message that should have been displayed and displays that as well so if we go back to our picture um, and set that full screen in that search we've got the instance we've got the, the base instance then we've called in the first instance we've called the method which was called search and that you know set those things up calls to redirect it came in again um, option uh, and this was going to the search again the second time there was no task equals so it just called the display and we saw that through the echo statements that were output so a lot of heavy stuff in this I'm afraid but hopefully um, it's shed a little bit of light on what's going on with Joomla here thanks for listening <laughs>